Hey guys, Fully, hope you're all well. What you're looking at in front of you is a friend's Xbox 360 Slim. As you can see, uh, it's working perfectly fine. Now my friend's finally bit the bullet. He wants me to RGH his Xbox 360 Slim. Now, this is gonna be different than the one I've already got on YouTube. That one's RGH 2.0, uh, I'm gonna RGH 3.0 this Xbox 360 Slim so if you stick around I'll crack on with that so the first thing I need to do is remove the R drive it's very easy to do just pull this catch here you grab the little tab and pull out the R drive what I want to do now is remove the side vents. Now the one with the R drive next to it is very easy. You just get your finger come underneath it and you can just pull it out like that. Uh, I've got to do the same on the opposite side now. Now to do the vent on the opposite side, uh, it's a little bit more tricky. What you do is you get a flat headed screwdriver like this. Uh, you pop it under there and you lever it out. Obviously I need two hands to do this. Because uh, if you don't, if you do it just one hand like this, you'll crack it. You need to put your hand over this so you don't crack the plastic. So yeah, I'll get this partially out and then come back and show you how you get the rest of it out. As you can see, I've got it partially started. Uh, it's pretty easy now. Just come along and you just gently pull it out. Simple as that. What I want to do now is remove each side panel uh, from the sides of the console. Now to do this, I'll show you what you need to get is you need to get a screwdriver, flat headed screwdriver like this. You need to pop it down like this and you'll come to a stop just there like that. What you need to do then is you need to, there's a clip and you need to pull it like that. And while you're doing that, you need to get your fingernail under it like this and push up. Uh, and what you'll find is it will clip out and then all you do is you just go around and do exactly the same and then you'll be able to take this side panel off what I'll do is I'll get this side panel off and then I'll show you one of those clips and it'll make more sense that's the side panel off I can show you one of the clips here's one of the clips and all you're doing is you're just coming down the side like this and you're going on this side and you're basically just levering it like that uh, and then obviously uh, you can put it out so that's that side panel off I need to turn it over and do the opposite side now and that's the opposite side panel off came off just like the other one the first thing I want to remove from the internal side of things is this Wi-Fi card now to do that you need a T8 Torx driver and you loosen this screw and you'll be able to pull out the Wi-Fi card what I want to point out to you guys is you can actually tell what type of drive you have in your Xbox 360 Slim um, if you look here you can see the emergency eject for the drive now with it being close to the end of the shield here that tells me it's an attache drive um, if it was here where this hole is it would be a light on drive and um, so yeah this is a, an attached drive in this thing what I want to do now uh, is obviously get the outer shell off uh, now to do that hopefully you can see uh, there's a couple of clips here uh, you turn it round on the opposite side there's another clip on the opposite side now the tough one to get is this one just here um, behind the security sticker but if you get the sticker off and you get your uh, flat blade screwdriver in there you can push it and pop it uh, but yeah what you need to do is same again you need to get your nail in like this and start prying it uh, you get a, a screwdriver flat bladed screwdriver like this and you just go around popping the catches so I'll do that I'll get this out of shell off that's the bottom off came off pretty easy once you pop those clips and uh, the bottom will come off what I need to do now is get the top lid off 
Uh, now to do that, if you take a look at the Xbox uh, 360 Slim, uh, Microsoft made it quite easy for us. You see all the black uh, screws that are in here. Uh, we take all those out um, using a T10 Torx bit and we can take the top lid off. And that's the top lid removed and it's confirmed. It is an Attachy drive. Uh, what I want to do now is remove the front face plate. Now you've got to be crazy careful with this guys. Uh, this is a really thin ribbon and if you're not careful you can damage it. Um, what I need to do is you see this connector here. What I need to do is I need to pull this blue bit over the connector. Then I can pull out the two wings uh, and then I can pull out the connector uh, ribbon cable. So yeah, I'm going to go ahead and do that, but I'm going to do it really carefully because it's uh, really easy to damage. That's the front fascia plate removed. Uh, what I want to do now is remove the ring and light board. Uh, now to do that, I need to remove this screw uh, and this screw. These are T8 Torque 8 bits. Uh, so I unscrew those uh, and then I can just pull the board straight off like that. What I want to do now is remove the DVD-ROM drive. Uh, now there's actually nothing holding it in, um, so it's very easy to get out. All I have to do is remove the power connection just here and the SATA cable, uh, and then I can just grab the drive uh, and pull it straight out. And that's the DVD-ROM removed, and now we can actually see the version of the board. Uh, if we take a look at these, two connectors just here uh, you can see they're both pointing downwards uh, that makes this board a trinity uh, if this connector here was facing this way like that um, it would make this a corona uh, but this motherboard is a trinity what i want to remove now is the shroud that goes around the fan now it's not screwed in it should just be push fitted on and it is there you go and that's that taken off What I want to do now is remove the hard drive caddy. Now that's very easy. Uh, first, I'm going to remove this side cable uh, that goes off to the hard drive. I'm going to flip it upside down. I need to remove uh, this screw just here. And if I flip it around on its back, uh, there's a screw just here. What I want to do now is remove the motherboard. So I'm going to flip it over and show you what needs to remove next. Uh, basically, every single screw that's left uh, needs to be uh, taken out. The silver ones are T10 Torx. I'll also need to remove the screws on the X clamp. They're T8 Torx. So yeah, I'll remove those and then I can take out the motherboard. And that's the motherboard out. What I want to do now uh, is remove the actual fan and heat sink uh, because I'm going to be working um, in this area just here. Uh, so what I want to do is remove the actual X clamp. Uh, now to do that, I'm going to get my X clamp tool and show you how I use it. So I've got my X clamp removal tool. I'm going to show you how I'm going to use it. I'm just going to come in like that and I'm just going to push down and there we go. Uh, that's going to remove the X clamp. So I'm just going to go around and do the other three corners and then come back. And as you can see, that's the fan removed. And now to completely move it, I just need to remove this connector here. Uh, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to get some alcohol and some Q-tips and I'm going to clean the old heat sink compound off the APU uh, and I'll clean it off the fan as well. That's the heat sink compound removed from the APU. I've also spent 10 minutes cleaning the fan and the heat sink up. Uh, it's time now to RGH. Uh, this console. 
what I've done is I've gone and put the case parts in the bath I'll let these soak while I'm RGH in the console and once I finish that I'll come back uh, and give them a scrub take these out and it should be nice and clean what I want to do now is talk about what I'm going to use to do the RGH3.0 hack I'm going to be using a quick solder board uh, the reason for that is it just makes things a little bit easier I'm also going to have to use my microscope as well because there's no way uh, you can do this with a naked eye it's just simply not happening uh, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get my microscope set up and then I'll come back preparing the quick solder board also what I'll do before I forget I'll, I'll put a link to these quick solder boards as well uh, in the description below
and that's the RGH3 side of things taken care of. What I want to do now is I want to get the heat sink and fan back on. I'm going to put the X clamp back on uh, and I'm going to use some of the good stuff for the thermal compound. I've got some Arctic MX4. And that's the heat sink and fan put back on. What I want to do now is I want to get the motherboard back in its case. The reason for that is because I want to screw down those uh, X clamp screws, those black four screws that are on the back and secure it and make sure it's nice and secure. And that's the motherboard back in its case. Uh, what I need to do now is obviously uh, set up JR programmer, uh, set up my laptop, uh, solder in the uh, NAND flashing wires so I can read the NAND. And as you can see I'm all looked up with my JR programmer. What I'll do guys is I'll put a little image up to show you how you install your NAND reading wires. Uh, so yeah, I've got the JR programmer hooked up. I've got J runner running. Uh, what I want to do now is just make sure I can see the motherboard. And if I do that, uh, you can see it's come up. It is a Trinity. So that's a really good sign. So what I need to do now is dump the NAND. So my NAND dumps are on two reads. And I'm just going to put read the NAND and uh, yeah what I'll do is I'll let this do its thing it's going to do two NAND dumps uh, and then when it's done its thing uh, I'll come back and that's both NANDs dumped now if you look at the bottom the most important thing here is NANDs are the same uh, if you do your two NAND dumps and they're not the same whatever you do do not continue my advice would be check your wiring uh, maybe shorten your wires uh, and then do it again but you need to make sure that both your NAND dumps are exactly the same so as you can see both my NANDs are the same so what I'm going to do now is I need to create the ECC file so it's already picked glitch 2 for me obviously this is now RGH3, so I'm going to select that. I'm going to put create ECC image. And you can see ECC created. Now I'm going to put write ECC image. And it shouldn't take long. Um, the ECC image is very small. okay so that's that done what I want to do now is disconnect my JR programmer uh, and I want to boot and see if I get Zell so I've disconnected my JR programmer um, moment of truth is it glitched to Zell now you can power on guys if you take your finger and try and get it on one of these resistors here there you go, I'll just turn it on and off. <laughs> there you go, turn it on. Come on, give me Zell. Show me Zell. It's booting. Yeah! <laughs> winner, winner! We got Zell! That's it now, guys. This Xbox 360 is uh, almost busted wide open I'll just leave it for a few seconds and we should see the CPU key and we should see the drive key uh, and it's all over for this Xbox <laughs> and there it is there's the CPU key and there's the drive key okay what I'm gonna do now guys is I'm gonna hook up a network cable uh, to this Xbox 360 uh, I'll power it on again um, and then I can use JRunner to pull over the CPU key and it will decrypt an end 
uh, then I can make the glitched image flash it over to the Xbox uh, and then this Xbox is done <laughs> well it's done now because uh, it's been busted wide open baby because we've got the CPU key <laughs> Got my network cable plugged in. Let's power on. Just a little bit. There you go. <laughs> Told you could do it with your finger. Let Zell boot up. I mean, this thing's insta boot, guys. RGH3 is insane. So, yeah, it's setting up uh, the network so I can pull over the CPU key there we go already so what is the network config if it's there it's 192.168.0.35 so if I enter that 35 hopefully J Runner will pull over the CPU key so get CPU key and there we go everyone's a winner KV info is all correct so yeah guys that's uh, almost complete now what I need to do now is I need to create the glitched image so I'm going to click create X build and it's going to do that give you a few seconds it's thinking about it <laughs> and there we go we're all ready now to flash this glitched image over and then well, this xbox is done so uh, i'm gonna power off and do that now actually we go power off uh, i'm gonna remove the network cable <laughs> don't want to be powering it on once you've glitched the console with a um, <laughs> network cable in in case it tries to connect to Microsoft because <laughs> you don't want that um, so yeah what I'm going to do now is I'm going to plug back in my JR programmer I'm going to program over that glitched image to the NAND and then we should be done I've got my JR programmer hooked up so I'm ready to write over that glitched NAND image so all I should have to do is click write and as you can see it's right in the NAND so what I'll do now guys is I'll let this finish and then come back once it's done and as you can see right successful so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to remove my JR programmer and then I'm going to power this on and hopefully we get a boot it should look like a normal Xbox boot but obviously it will be glitched so yeah I'm going to remove my JR programmer and then come back so it's moment of truth guys I've removed the JR programmer let's see if we can power this on there we go this proper insta boot guys and there you go absolutely amazing this rgh3 is absolutely amazing but yeah there you go guys you can see that's one glitched xbox 360 slim so yeah what i'm going to do now is obviously i'm going to remove the nand programming wires and then i can start putting this xbox 360 back together again just before I put the final parts on obviously the front cover uh, the top and bottom cover and the two sides I just want to show you what it looks like inside uh, hopefully you can agree uh, it's looking a lot better um, I'm gonna have a word with my friend to tell him look after his better and um, because that was uh, really dirty in there and um, you know it doesn't take five minutes every now and again just to get a air can and just blow out the fan so yeah i'm going to get the the rest of this back together and then when i've done that i can wrap up the video 
and as you can see we're all back together so let's power on with the ring of light on the controller insane insta boot <laughs> insta boot rgh3 absolutely fantastic now this is the next day here guys uh, what you're going to see pop up is aurora uh, when i got this uh, console back together uh, yesterday it was getting a bit late and i'd not had any thing to eat so uh, i knocked it on the head last night uh, had something to eat came back and then installed aurora um, but as you can see uh, this xbox 360s is rgh3 hacked and it's working fantastic uh, what I'll do guys is I'll put a link uh, to Mr. Mario's video. It's a brilliant video by the way. It uh, shows you how to install Aurora. Um, it's pretty easy. It only takes about 20 minutes off an hour. But yeah, as you can see, this thing's working great. Let's, uh, I'll put a game on it. Deus Ex Human Revolution. Uh, let's start the game. As you can see... Uh, it doesn't ask for the disc. <laughs> Come on, focus, focus. There we go. <laughs> it's a brilliant game, by the way, guys, if you're wondering. So, yeah, what I want to do next. Uh, to this Xbox 360 is I want to flash uh, the internal drive now I don't have a LTU2 board for the Hitachi uh, drive that's in this I have one for the Lighton drives but I don't have one for the Hitachi drives so I'm going to have to order that and that will probably be the next video uh, for this console now would be me flashing it uh, with custom firmware for the drive so yeah i hope you liked the video guys if you did please give it a big thumbs up like comment subscribe all the usual stuff and as always i'll catch you on the next one winner winner rgh3 it's brilliant insta boots every time catch you next time guys